right, uh, 22 minutes before 11 o'clock. I have to apologize. We had a few technical glitches right there. And uh, apologies to listeners and also to our guest who was waiting a little bit longer than he should have. Uh, Kevin Noble Maillard is on the phone. He's a member of the Seminole Nation uh, Mikasuki Band. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he's a journalist, a professor, a contributor to the New York Times. At the age of 13, he caught 72 fish in two hours. Oh, my gosh, Robin. That's a good piece of information. Yeah. Uh, and he won a fishing derby. His book is called Fry Bread, a Native American family story. When I looked at the book, I was reminded of the time I was in a dentist's office and there were some children's books in the waiting room. And I picked one up to read it and you think, ah, this would be fun. And I actually learned something from a children's book. And you think, oh my gosh, is that mm -hmm. possible? You know, you don't think of it that way. This book does the same thing. Kevin Noble Maillard, good morning, sir. It's an honor to have you on our show and please accept our apologies for making you wait. Good morning. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I love this book. It's 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 delightful. It's enjoyable. I'm thinking kids are going to pick it up, but if, if you're an adult and you pick it up, you're going to learn something you didn't know. Definitely, yeah. We there's a lot. There's definitely pictures. Uh, we have a lot of uh, wonderful endnotes. We include the names of every single uh, federally recognized, state recognized tribe. Tribes going through the process of recognition, and then we also include a lot of back matter. Uh, those are the end, um, the notes at the end for parents, teachers, and other educators, so everyone can have something uh, that they could take away from the book. So, rather than me telling the audience what's in the book, you tell the audience, please. What is what does fry bread? What does the title actually mean? So fry bread uh, is something that every native family makes. And so it's made out of salt, flour, sugar, Thank you. Uh, yeast, and maybe cornmeal. And it's different for every family, right? And it's different in every tribe. They can make it however they want. And usually people grow up being very accustomed to a certain version of fry bread. So fry bread is definitely one of those culturally argumentative foods where <laughs> you're right and everybody else is wrong, <laughs> right? So it could be like matzo ball soup right, 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 or right, right, right. bar barbecue right you know like you go to a different state and it's like that's not barbecue that's like pork and vinegar <laughs> you know barbecue has all this red sauce on it that smells like mesquite so fry bread is the same way and when i was a graduate student i did a phd in political theory at the university of michigan in the 90s and there were a lot of chippewas that are there so i'm from oklahoma mm -hmm. and so i'm up in you know upper midwest and all of these people up there, you know, where I'm around all these other native people, Chippewas from Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And so they're saying like, oh, this is what fry bread is. And then I would say, I've never even had that. I don't even know what that is. And they would say the same about my fry bread in return. But we could all agree that everybody else's version was either super disgusting or wrong <laughs> or invalid in some way and so the reason that I did this book it's because fry bread is a lot like the way that native people in America are there are so many different ways to be native and it's so incredibly diverse but there's this unifying commonality that we are all native people that we are all members of a tribe or you know, we're trying to be members of a tribe um, uh, for the people who actually think of themselves and are recognized as native people. And it's so different, just like all the different ingredients. Like someone could be black and native, like myself. Someone right, could right. be white and native. Someone could be uh, Latino and native. They could live in a big city. They could live in Orlando. They could live um, in Ocala. They could live in New York City. New York City has the highest population of native people of any city in the United States, but we don't normally think of native people being, you know, in a doorman building in Manhattan taking the subway. People think of native people and it's, you know, it's very frozen in a period of time in the 1800s, like Tonto, right? right? right people right. that have long black hair that have, um, 
dark brown skin, and they live in these red rock Sierras of the West, like Arizona. But that's just a stereotype. That's the Hollywood version. It's not even a stereotype. Right, right. It's definitely a reality for some people, but it's not the reality for most people because most Native people do actually live in cities. So the goal of Fly Bread was to bring the bring Native culture and the perception of Native culture into the modern era. And uh, that's what your book does. It talks about the resiliency and the endurance. Definitely, definitely. So Fry Bread started off in the 1800s. It was a survival food. It was something about deprivation. The first people to eat fry bread were the Navajos, uh, the Diné people. And when they were removed from ancestral land to government land, they were separated from their diet that they had known for thousands of years, right? Familiar fruits, familiar meats, familiar vegetables. So they're in this new place, and then the government is giving them food. What do they give them? Flour, salt, sugar. They were commodities. And so what these first people did was make the best of what little they had. So we could think of fry bread coming from this food of survival, and that was about very hard times. But it's also about how people made it through all those years ago, and how people have still made it through, and how people have not disappeared or vanished, and to say, we're still here. So I think of fry bread in a way like communion. Right. You know, like in Christian churches, there is bread and wine uh, in the celebration of uh, the sacrament. Right. right? right, right. You eat this bread or you drink the wine and it's a remembrance of something that came before. And then so fry bread in a way, like not every person is like taking fry bread and saying like, take, eat, this is the deprivation of my previous people. <laughs> right, right, right. But they, it, but it's a connection to that past. And so native people definitely eat fry bread. There uh, is an old lady in every family that makes the fry bread. And in my family, I had two uh, older aunts and they were sisters of my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother died before I was born. And so these two sisters made fry bread. And so it was like um, Coke versus Pepsi or Pat's versus Gino's cheesesteaks in Philadelphia. And usually there's only one person that makes fry bread in the family, but there were two in our families and they were kind of warring sisters. <laughs> and but everyone, uh, you know, they, they love the fry bread that they grew up with. And so one thing that everyone can agree on is that everybody else's fry bread is wrong. <laughs> and so my grandmother, well, I call her my grandmother, but my aunt was the one that taught me how to make fry bread. And so I really loved those moments with her in her kitchen. And, you know, she's making cake, she's making fry bread, she's making pies pancakes, whatever it might be. And so this is also a book, you know, it's a love letter to these old ladies in my family that taught so much and that imparted that knowledge onto me. And so when they got older, um, one died in her 70s and another one died about 10 years ago when she was one day short of her 100th birthday. Oh my gosh. And oh so, wow. Yeah. She was a pistol. She definitely was. And, um, when they died, there was no one else in our family that was making fry bread for so many years. And so I realized that it wasn't going to come back on its own. My mom isn't a fry bread person. I mean, she loves to eat it, but she doesn't make it. Uh, my brothers are definitely not going to be the ones that, that do it. You know, and no one else in the family is going to do it. So I was like, I have to take on this responsibility. So in that absence, I became the fry bread lady for my family. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And so now everyone expects it uh, at our family dinners. Uh, now kids at my school. Uh, 
kids' school, they expect it because I've made it for them a couple of times. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that brings everyone together because it tastes great and it's really fun to eat. And it's also really fun to learn about something that people didn't know about before. Two thoughts I wanted to uh, kind of run by you, not that these are really substantial, but um, one of them is I wonder if the reason for the the multi recipes or the multi things is because we we think of America as one place and therefore the native people should be one people but the truth is that there was it was there was more than 50 even I mean we have 50 states I'm sure there was more than we don't even know all the different tribe names probably and and each one of those tribes probably had their own traditions is that does that sound right? Oh, they definitely do. Yeah, and then in um, the end papers, in the front and the back of the book, like right when you first open it, uh, attached to the cover, are the names of every single one of the five hundred and seventy something federally recognized tribes. So people can look at this list and say, I didn't know there were so many tribes that are out there. Right, right. There, we also included the names of the 100 or so state recognized tribes. And then we also did an inclusive thing where we included on this list the names of tribes that have applied for recognition but have not been recognized for whatever reason. But the, all those groups still think of themselves uh, the Duwan Amish people or certain bands of Cherokees, they still think of themselves as native people. And then they say on their websites or, you know, they can tell you in person, we don't need the government to tell us who we are because we yeah, still believe yeah, yeah. that we're still here. So, you know, we're getting into like maybe 800 names. So it's really amazing. And I'm still rather moved so, when I look at all of these names in one place, because then it's just like, you well, then can it makes see sense. The enormity of it, that, and then you realize like how little yeah. that you know. Right. And then even for me, who's grown up with this, you know, there are tribes that I've never heard of before. There's so many Alaskan villages, rancherias in California, pueblos in New Mexico, um, that I've not heard of before. They're very small. Right, right. Uh, some, you know, everyone's heard of larger tribes, but some of these smaller tribes and listing those names in the book allows any of those readers who are from those individual nations mm -hmm. to be able to go through the list and point to their own tribal name and feel seen and included in the book. And are there that many recipes of fry bread? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Um, I've um, encountered so many different ways of making it. And what's funny is one of the editors, I had someone um, uh, read the book for me, uh, a native woman. And then, so I include my recipe in the book. And she emailed me. I, we text and email each other all the time. But, and she told me, you know that your version is not fry bread, right? So, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, oh, that's the purpose of the book. But you know, everyone has their own different that is, uh, um, mm -hmm. And I made it. I have two children, one's seven and one's four. And so I actually use somebody else's recipe, not my own, uh, one time, and my children were so mad at me because they were like, what is this? I don't know what this is. You know, <laughs> oh, my. They weren't used to it. But when you, and they said, I want to go back to the regular version. That what? was their version of regular. But if we went back <laughs> in time, would, wouldn't the flour and all the other raw, raw materials actually be ground from the weed itself? They wouldn't go to the grocery store and buy a bag of flour, right? Oh, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. And then, like, so they would have been given this in large quantities by the government, right? So then it would have come in some type of bag or container anyway. So, you know, they wouldn't have had, like, a Safeway or a Whole Foods, definitely, back right. in <laughs> mid-1800s. But then they would have had all of this food given to them, and then that was the only thing that they had and then that's what you know it's like you're given all of these materials and then you say what else can we do with this <laughs> and so we can see this bread being a food that is symbolic of native history in america and then it is something that ties us to our past and the reason that i wanted to do something about fry bread um 
when my oldest kid, he's seven now, but when he was first born, I wanted to give him books. So in my apartment, we live in Manhattan and we have just a lot, a lot of books in our house, right? So floor to ceiling, wall to wall, just hundreds, maybe thousands of books. And so I wanted them to have the same love for reading. So I was looking for an expansive, diverse collection of books to put in their own library in their room. And so I was looking for books about African Americans. You can find them, you know, in any bookstore. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them at your local independent bookstore. Your librarian can give them to you, right? The Snowy Day, everyone's read that by Ed with Jack Keats or The People That the People Can Fly by Virginia Lee Hamilton. Mm-hmm. You can find those books. You can find books about Asian Americans. You can find books about Latinos. Not a lot, but you can find them. But when it comes to books about Native people, it at that time was near impossible to find anything. So that year in 2013, there were 3,600 children's books that were published in America and only six of them were written by or illustrated by native people. All of the other ones that were out there were about people that lived a long time ago. They were about Thanksgiving or, you know, non-native people playing dress up, right? right? And putting combs or brushes in the back of their hair to use as feathers and dressing up in towels as some type of like, you know, mascot type of costume. And so there were none of these books that were about modern people, about people living today, you know, a a boy and his dog, you know, a girl, how much she loves her cat or her favorite pair of shoes, you know, just like any other children's book that didn't exist at all. And I was so appalled by this that I just decided that I was going to write my own book. The book is currently number one on Amazon in the children's Native American book category, so congratulations on that. And uh, if you're looking at the Thank video, you. I know that we got the video started late, but uh, it's I have the camera aimed at the book itself because I couldn't to get the other part to work where it, I actually grab a picture off of the internet. Do you know I wanted to tell you something? This, it's kind of interesting that you talk about fry bread as being one of those foods that we argue about or that people would argue about. We do the same thing. We had this discussion this about pizza everybody seems to think yeah, theirs yeah. is the best right yeah. <laughs> so so if you put sauce tomato sauce and cheese on fry bread would it be pizza <laughs> <laughs> right exactly i remember a story so i went to duke university in north carolina and my parents came to visit me and we went to this barbecue joint in durham north carolina called bullocks and everyone loves bullocks everyone goes but my parents you know they're from oklahoma and they come and they're like okay let's go eat some barbecue in north carolina this is going to be really great (laughs) this was in 1992 right so this was like 27 years ago and my mother still talks about how disappointing oh, no. that barbecue was <laughs> because that barbecue was different because she's used to like ribs with like mesquite sauce on them yeah. and in North Carolina it's pulled pork with vinegar <laughs> and so it was just like such a letdown because she had this very specific version and impression of what it meant and she still and talks so about with it with fry bread it's about dispelling all those different impressions and saying that each one one of those is okay. But I still would never be able to convince my mother that that was food at all. <laughs> I'll see her this weekend. We're launching the book uh, in her hometown in Wewoka, Oklahoma. Aww. I'll be spending time with her this weekend. And, um, uh, you know, like we'll is- talk about all the different foods that are out there. And right. the interesting thing is uh, it's the Sorghum Festival. Uh, oh, sorghum is gosh. like an Indian version I of know. molasses. I am not a fan of sorghum. I, it's so sort of, thick. <laughs> I've had uh, that, yeah. Do you, um, when you have these, yeah. these type of festivals, yeah. do you bake and cook the different foods the way it was in the very beginning? Or do you do it with, you know, the, the equipment of today? Because mm. that must make oh, a difference in taste. Of today. Yet, I, uh-huh. No one is, you know, like putting a fire, you know, like with wood and like a big kettle. But the one thing that we are doing this weekend at this, it's a huge parade, 20,000 people that are going to be there. Um, I, there will be a huge 
skillet, I've been told, where all the old ladies are going to be making fry bread all together. So it's going to be me and probably about like 10 old ladies all telling me. You better drop the word old. That my fry bread is you, wrong. You're going to get in trouble. You better yeah, drop the word old. Don't say old. They're, they're going to have a hard time with you. Uh, the the uh, uh, illustrator of your book, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, Pure um, uh, Juana Martinez Neal. Uh, she was a Pura Belpre Award winner and a Caldecott honoree. Nice. And I'm really glad yeah. that, you know, she she's done such a wonderful job on the illustrations. They're so warm. You just want to hug them, especially the picture of the mom and yeah. the baby on the cover. Yes, definitely. And the, the baby on the cover is actually my daughter. Uh, Juana Aww. was great about uh, oh, nice. reading my Instagram and asking for pictures and examples of uh, images from my own family. And so she put me in the book. Uh, she put my kids in the book. She put my partner in the book. Um, so it's definitely a very personal thing that now we're sharing uh, with the world. It's wonderful. One quick last question. Why is it fry and not yeah. fried like past tense? I've never been asked that question before. <laughs> um, I, I would not know. Well, because you know what? So I'm in Manhattan, and so I'll make this bread for my kids' classes. And sometimes people come up to me and they'll say, What is this delicious fried bread? <laughs> and then I think, It's not fried bread, it's fried, but it's fried. Fry bread, right? I don't know whether it was like an, you know, a 19th century thing where that's the way people talk, but, um, you know, we're from Oklahoma now. That's still the way that we say it. My gosh, what a great interview you gave us. I, I am so uh, appreciative that you were able to be on. I'm so glad that te the technical glitches got worked out so we could have you on. Um, the book Thanks is so called much. Fry Bread. And guess what? I was sent a copy. I hate giving it up, but I'm going to give it up. I will get my own copy. We're, we're, ha we're making a collection of children's books, by the way, so that when the kids come over, we'll have a lot of books. Um, so c call me right now if you want this one. It's called Fry Bread. Everybody else, you can get it on Amazon. And before you say goodbye, Kevin, give us a, a different website if you have one for yourself. Uh, just kevinmillard.com K-E-V-I-N-M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D.com Okay, and we'll make sure we put this uh, interview up as a podcast. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me on. That was fun. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.